Hello, my name is Camilla Chadwick and I'm six and a half years old. And guess what? I've got a magic granddad. Well, he's not really my granddad. He's my mum's granddad, so that means he's my great granddad. Can I meet him? I told you I don't like bicycles. Well, have some Frosties, for goodness sake. I don't like Frosties either. I forgot to tell you, I've got this really awful brother called Gary. I don't like Frosties either, Mum. Well, Gary, if you can't find something you like out of all that lot, then I'm sorry for you. What about some nice fried bacon and egg for a treat? I'm doing some for Grandad. No! Well, that's funny. Something wrong? The stove doesn't seem to be working. Nor the toaster, nor the kettle. Must be a power cut. Looks like it. I'm afraid that's the end of your bacon and egg, Grandad. I wanted an egg. Oh, Gary, don't start that again. You just said you didn't. I can't even make you a cup of tea, Grandad. I'm sorry. I'll go and have a look in the fuse box. Oh, dear. No breakfast. I think this calls for a bit of magic, don't you? See, I told you. Why, what are you going to do? Well, I think I'd better take you somewhere where we can get some breakfast. Where? I'll give you a clue. We're going somewhere where the kettle is always boiling. Mm, don't know. Right, I'll give you another clue. When I was a boy your age, we had no electricity in our house. But we could always cook our breakfast and have a cup of tea. How? You want to know what life was like when Albert was a lad? How did Mum make a cup of tea when there was no electricity? How did she wash with no machine and get the clothes all dry? How did she iron and how did she sew? She had no light to see things by. If you really want to know, then you must close your eyes. Let Albert take you back in time. You're in for a big surprise. We haven't gone anywhere. We're still in your house. But we've gone back about 80 years in time. It doesn't look like our house. Oh, yes, it does. Look. The window's the same. We're still in the kitchen. There's no cooker in this kitchen. Oh, yes, there is. I can see a cooker. Where? There. That big black thing. Only they don't call it a cooker. They call it a range. And you know what that is? It's a fire. Yes, a coal fire. You don't turn that on by pressing a switch. You need paper and sticks and a match to set that coal alight. Then it has to be watched all day. In fact, I think I'll put a bit of coal on now and bring this kettle to the boil. My mother always had a kettle on the hob. Ah, I thought so. I thought I smelt something good. Porridge. That'll have been cooking all night, that will. All night? All night long. My mother used to build up the fire and put the porridge in the oven before she went to bed, and then when she got up in the morning, it was ready for all of us. No cornflakes or ricicles for us. There's someone coming. Yes. It'll be the family who lived here then. But we live here. It's our house. Yes, but it wasn't always your house. It was built long before you were born. In fact, it was built nearly a hundred years ago. And you're about to meet the Deakin family, who were the very first people who lived here. Will they mind us being here? No. I told them you were coming. It's a part of the magic. Hello. You must be Kimberly and Gary. Have you come for breakfast? Yes, please. If that's all right. Of course it's all right. I've put in extra porridge, specially. 
This is Eliza, by the way. She's my youngest girl, since her sister Nancy died. And the baby's name is Freddie. Hello. Hello. Well, you can't all stand around like this. What about giving Eliza a hand, Kimberly? All right. Get the frying pan down, if you please, Kimberly. Here. That's it. Mm. They cook it over the fire. That's right. And what about you, Gary? Big lad like you would know how to make a pot of tea, I suppose. I know how to make a cup of tea with the tea bag. <laughs> There's no tea bags here, Gary. They haven't been invented yet. You keep the caddy on the mantelpiece as usual? That's right. That tin up there. Ah. Here, Liza, you and Kimberly take Freddy, lime down in his pram in the backyard. I'll watch the bacon. The tea caddy is what you keep the tea leaves in. Have you ever seen tea leaves? No. And you have now. Now, what you do is you put three or four teaspoonfuls into the teapot. You make sure you warm the pot first. It's already warm, Mrs. D. Standing by the fire. Now, fill the teapot from this boiling water. <coughs> it's quite awake. And now, we leave it for three or four minutes to let the flavour out. So the tea and the bacon and the porridge all get cooked on the fire? That's right. We'd be lost without the fire, wouldn't we, Mrs. D? What's that? I said we'd be lost without the fire. That's right. Everything happens round the fire. Everything happened round the fire when Albert was a lad. We had no electricity, so on the range we made our tea. Hooks we had to hang our pants and hooks to roast our meat. We warmed the water and heated the oven. We even toasted our feet. Da, da, da. We had to hang our pants and push the roast our meat. We warmed the water and heated the oven. We even tested our feet. Yeah. <laughs> That's our dad's chair. What? That's our dad's chair. You're not allowed to sit in that chair. And that's our mum's chair. You're not allowed to sit there either. Well, where am I supposed to sit? Boys don't sit. What do you mean? Our big sister Hattie's the only one out of us children who gets to sit down at the table because she goes out to work. Children don't sit down at the table until they go out to work. That's not fair. Be careful, Ooh. careful, Gary. I shouldn't talk like that if I were you. You uh, see this strap? Yes. We had one of these. And if one of us got out of line, across our backside. I'm not scared. <sighs> Morning, Albert. Morning, Mr. D. Morning, children. Morning. Breakfast ready? Yes. Oh, shut the oven door for me, Kimberly, and then get me the milk. Okay. Granddad? Mm -hmm. Where's the fridge? No fridge is here, darling. They haven't been invented yet. But I think there'll be a jug of milk keeping cool in the larder. Ah, this is the larder, or pantry. It's a bit cooler than in the kitchen, but not much. So they don't keep a lot of food in it in case it goes off. Ah, I think this is what you're looking for. Thank you. How's the porridge, young Gary? I don't like it. All right, if I sit down, Mrs. D. Please, can I have some of that bacon? Children don't get bacon. <sighs> Thank you, my dear. Dip a bit of this in the dripping for your father, Liza. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my dear. Well, you've done some for your mother. You can do some for you and Jack and Kimberly. What about me? Well, you ain't eating your porridge. I don't like it. No porridge, no bread and dripping. 
Why not? That's not fair. You have a lot to say for yourself for such a little fella. I haven't hardly said anything. Children speak when they're spoken to in this ass, and not unless. But... Hey! Why did your dad get the bacon? And you only get the bread and dripping. Because he has to work. If he can't work, there'll be no food for anyone. Doesn't her mum have to work too? Oh, yes, and hard. She does all the housework. No vacuum cleaners for Mrs. D. She has to get down on her hands and knees and scrub the floor. You tell him what you have to do, Mrs. D. We'd be here all day if I did that. Please. I'll just tell you about wash day, then. Our Liza stays off from school to help me with that. What we do... We fill this big copper over here full of water. Then we light the fire beneath it. When the water's good and hot, we take it a little bit at a time. Then we rub and we scrub till the clothes are all clean. That's right, my dears. On Monday, Mum washes the clothes all day and hangs them out to dry. And then at night, she brings them in and folds them, ready for ironing. The irons are heated by the fire. She likes them good and hot. That way she gets the creases out, cause that's what ironing's all about. Oh, children, what a lot of memories. Mm -hmm. So now you know what life was like when Albert was a man. You know how Mum made a cup of tea? when there was no electricity. You know how she washed with no machine and got the clothes all dry. Now close your eyes and think of home and back again we'll fly. That's the power back on again. It was the fuse. I said that's the power back on again. You lot didn't even notice, did you? What have you been doing to keep them so quiet, Granddad? We've been making some interesting discoveries about this house. Yeah, we met the people who lived in it when it was first built. And they had a daughter called Eliza, and a little boy called Jack, and a baby called Fred. What have you been telling them, Granddad? It's true they used to cook on a, r r a rain. And the mum and the children didn't get any bacon. All they got was bread dipped in dripping. Well... You certainly bring it all alive for them, Grandad. She's right there. Tell you what, why don't you come back another day? Magic Great Grandad's doing his magic. Thank you.